Hi there, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is Angela and I'm a home gardener growing here in zone six, southwestern Ohio. Today I want to share with you guys some new perennials that I recently planted. If that sounds interesting, stick around. So the veggie garden here is pretty much done. I am not doing any fall or succession planting this year. Uh, we got our first frost this morning. It was pretty pretty substantial frost. Um, this is roughly anywhere between mid-October to late October is when we can count on getting our first frost. So it, I guess it did come a little bit early this year, um, but that's okay. Harvested all of the remaining watermelons and peppers and anything I wanted to save. I got those yesterday knowing that we were likely going to get a frost overnight. So the watermelons were fantastic. A little small, but the flavor was so good. I grew sweet crimson sangria and baby doll. So highly recommend all three of those varieties. But as fall has been uh, here, I've kind of been turning my attention more towards landscaping and primarily planting native plants, native to the, the Midwest, which is where I am, or at least to the Eastern half of the US. And not everything that I am ordering, buying and planting is native but one rule that i've kind of laid down for myself especially as i keep learning more and more about how important native plants are to the local uh, insect life and not just insects but birds and other animals uh, i have set a rule that i will do at least 50 percent native plants any new plantings that i do and usually it's quite a bit higher than 50 it's approaching, I would guess, about 75%. That said, um, some of these plants I'm gonna show you today are not native, but I did check when I ordered them to make sure that they are not invasive. If you guys are ready, let's take a look at what I planted. So everything that I got into the ground this past weekend is over here along this um, side of the house. If you've been following my channel for a little bit, especially this year, then you may know I'm focused heavily on getting um, this particular bed right alongside the house planted pretty heavily but I did plant this uh, pot you can see this um, it's a pretty good size pot and what I planted in there was Deer Villa Kodiak Black I will put the names of these uh, plants up on the screen or else I'll list them in the description box below and because right now they don't look like too much it's really hard to tell like how nice that's going to be when it's full, fully grown. I'll go ahead and put a photo up on the screen of uh, the plant as, as it'll look when it's grown. I got all of these plants that I'm showing you today from Great Garden Plants. They are my new latest greatest obsession because the prices are really good and they have a pretty decent variety and a pretty decent selection of native plants. And the ones that I'm going to show you today are not everything that I ordered from them in my plant haul. I'm just going to show you what I actually got into the ground. And then I'll keep showing you these as I get the things into the ground. I thought it might work a little bit better that way. You can kind of see over there inside my bed, I've got a bunch of uh, potted plants that I still need to get to. But, you know, we've got... We've got a little while yet this fall where the ground will still be workable. Um, the next thing, oh, that deer villa that I showed you was a native plant. And then the next thing that I got was, I got three of these. These are a sedum and it's called coral carpet. Um, they're so cute. The foliage looks really uh, tender, feathery, dainty. That's the word I'm looking for, as opposed to some other sedums that I have which are quite different so I planted two of those in this bed and then one around in the front of the house which I'll show you here in just a moment those are native to Europe Siberia West Asia North Africa but I don't think that they're considered invasive or at least they'll be easily contained in this bed here and then two other things that I planted were and these are not going to look like anything now because they've died back but these are hello yellow milkweed so they're done for the season but i got one there and then one right back there i'll put a picture up of what those will look like once they're um you know doing pretty good 
established that's the right word I'm having trouble with my words today <laughs> the other two things that I got into the ground oh, before we get there you can see I still have uh, some potted <clears throat> things there and I will I'll show you what those are once I get them planted up it's gotten to be where I am spending my whole allowance on plants now <laughs> the way that we do our household finances when we get paid we pay all our bills that are due put aside money for groceries and whatnot and then we split the difference or the remainder and call it our allowance my husband and I so we can spend our allowance on anything we want we don't have to like answer to the other person of what we spent it on it's our own like free money to spend how we like this is the other coral carpet. I thought it would look really good. And with all these rocks, um, sedum is the perfect plant to plant um, in a rock garden. Not that this is a true rock garden by any stretch, but there are, there are a lot of rocks. It's kind of like a rock garden. And then the next thing is another sedum. This one's called Angelina. So I'm hoping that I got these sedums up here down far enough. I tried to mound up dirt around them just because this area is not really diggable. There is gravel underlayment all over and it's really hard to plant anything here. So I'm hoping that that'll do fine there. My experience with sedums, um, once they get a little tiny foothold, that's all they need and they're they'll take off. So I'm hoping that that's the case with these new ones. And the last thing that I'm going to show you today is a fern. I forgot to tell you that the Angelina sedum is native to Central and Western Europe and Turkey. And my next thing is uh, Brilliance Autumn Fern. Got it in this um, concrete planter here so it gets lots of shade in this spot so I think it'll do well there that is not native it's native to Asia the milkweeds of course are native to here so that's good yes yeah, so out of these six different varieties that I'm showing you today it looks like just two of things two of the different plants are native um, but like I said, that's not 50%, two out of six, but uh, I haven't planted everything yet. There's still more to come, more to show you. Then the last thing that I got into the ground that was part of this order was a couple of grasses. You can see there, and then there's one there. And once I got these two in the ground, I realized that I really would like another one to even go further down so that there will be three in a row here equally spaced. I'm going to take you around a little further out to show you what my hope is with those grasses and what my intention is and why I put them there. So they're going to get tall. I forgot to tell you the name. So those are called scout maiden grass. They'll get five to six feet tall and two to three feet wide and they will do well in part sun to shade which is kind of rare for a grass they're not native but they are sterile so they're not invasive uh, that was important to me because i know those grasses can kind of take over so if you kind of see our front deck there it needs a little work i wanted it to really like i'm focusing on really trying to beautify this whole side of the house so those two grasses are right there and there and the next one will go right about here so there'll be three in a row and once they really kind of get tall and thicken up they'll provide a nice little cover for that opening there under the deck but yet they'll be easy enough to cut back if we need to access under that deck for any reason or if there's any work that needs to be done on the house so it won't be like planting a woody a shrub there where it might hinder access so I thought that would be a good solution for there and that's all I really have to show you today I'm still in the process of pulling all the spent veggie plants out still working on getting that whole area mulched in uh, the pathways and such any place where there's not a raised bed is getting a layer of mulch for the winter and then I won't have to do it when springtime comes so that'll be nice I do have more of these um, perennials and shrubs to share with you guys and in fact 
ever since I got that first shipment in, some of which I showed you today, I just today received a second shipment of plants. So the prices are so good at great garden plants. I'm wondering if I could um, be an ambassador at some point. Uh, I'm really enjoying their plants. I do love best of all, of course, shopping at my local nurseries. They usually have a great selection and things that will do very well in our local area. So don't think that I'm just mail ordering plants and that's it. <laughs> Uh, I will show you, I'll keep showing you all these plants as I get them planted. I thought it would be nicer for you to see them where they're meant to go rather than just a whole bunch of potted up plants. So anyway, that's an, all that to say. That's all I have to share with you today. I hope that you're having a great week. I hope that you have a great weekend ahead and stay tuned to the next one when I will hopefully have gotten more of these um, plants in the ground. I'll share with you what those are. Take care.